we were looking at what predicted the difference between physical therapists and school systems embedding services, meaning providing their services in students' natural routines and natural environments, the difference between embedding in actually and ideally, because there are studies that show that physical therapists think that they should embed a lot more than they actually do embed. And I really wanted to look at what could be a factor in the discrepancy between ideal and actual. And that's how we defined our gap, is that discrepancy between those two. So what did you do in the study and what did you find? We asked them questions about embedding their services actually and how much they wanted to embed them ideally. We asked in eight different categories and we found that there were four categories that predicted the difference between ideal and actual practice. And those four were the severity of the student's disability, the therapist or district's ability to bill medical assistance, which is a, a billing system that we have the option of using in some schools, the written contracts of the therapist that um, that would meaning the contract that employed them at that school system, as well as the preference by families. Those were our four areas that predicted the difference between ideal and actual practice. So in terms of a busy physical therapy practice, pediatric physical therapy, what value have you added to this situation? I think that it's interesting to see that billing and contracts came into that. And I think that's something that that because this has not been, it's been hypothesized, but not studied before. I think that's something that 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 requires further study. I think it's really nice to see that severity of disability was our highest category because according to IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, where a student is placed, and as we're looking at the services we provide, we really need to be taking the student's needs into account. And I, it looks like, at least if we're defining their needs as the severity of their disability, it looks like we are making some of those decisions based on what IDEA says. IDEA also says that we should take family, uh, families are a big part of the team making these decisions. And so if one of the reasons that um, we have a gap is due to taking families' preferences into account. I do think that's a positive thing. Linda, you're looking, we're both looking at this paper from uh, uh, Valerie Clevenger. What do you make of this study? She and her team were really interested in uh, looking at what is the reality of school-based practice and what are the constraints or the barriers in practice and can we best predict how to implement some of the public laws, some of the best practice uh, in school systems if we concentrate on the, the variables, the, the factors that are really the most challenging. And what they discovered, which is really quite remarkable, there are four factors that actually accounted for almost half of the variance in the data, which is really quite remarkable. And those four factors were the actual disability that the child had, billing for the various uh, school therapy, that, which is a big one, um, the contracts that schools have either with private practices, with individual therapists, the nature of the contracts, and then the nature of the family, the ability of the family to implement, advocate, etc., for their children. Those four predicted almost half of the of this gap between ideal and actual practice. Now that sounds potentially very useful. What are we getting from this that's of practical use to pediatric physical therapists? Well, one of the things I think that's important is to see what really are the child's issues and how does that affect whether we're able to implement best practice in the school system. And the other are, are really intertwined, and that's the billing for practice and the contracts that are written um, between therapists and school systems. Those are aspects that we have some input to, but 
Unfortunately, that's third-party payers, insurance companies, um, individual contracts that are written and how they're implemented. And that may take really advocacy on the part of the therapist in terms of working with third-party payers. Um, but we know that, that that's a reality and may need to have some serious advocacy. The other is in, that always comes up in just every study that's done with children is the importance of families. Um, that uh, it always surprises me if it doesn't come up in a particular study that families are extremely important in terms of achieving the kinds of interventions that physical therapists think is best practice. 